Well, folks, if Sir Peter Usenov once said that Toronto is New York run by the Swiss, <laughs> and by the same token, I like to think that Ricky Gervais is a Canadian run by the Brits. <laughs> I have a few reasons for saying this. Firstly, his comedy is irreverent, cringe-inducing, satirical, and dark. <laughs> Much like the way Canadians feel when their nether parts shrivel in a minus 35 January wind chill, <laughs> or the way Brits feel after 35 days of rain or 35 days of B2 bombs. <laughs> <laughs> or dark. <laughs> Secondly, since Ricky's domination of U.S. television with shows like The Office and The Office <laughs> and Extras, Ricky is likely looking to invade Canada. Now, he's doing this not by writing another fabulously funny TV show for the CBC, but rather by seeking Canadian citizenship because he knows we're an orderly bunch. Well, this part is easy because, for those of you that don't know, Ricky's father is Canadian, was Canadian from London, Ontario. However, I must warn you now, Ricky, on a personal note, this is very important to listen carefully because there's something you don't know. If you actually do become a Canadian, we won't care anymore. <laughs> And Ricky is among the biggest, okay? Not as big as BT's Tony Hayward these days, but way less fun. <laughs> now, Ricky today started his career path studying biology and quickly switched to philosophy at University College London, where he earned very high marks indeed. Now, this came as a surprise, and I think the general consensus was that Ricky himself was never as smart as the characters he played on TV. <laughs> but he must have had something going for him because it was there he hooked up with a very hot woman named James Callum. Now this is personally weird to me because I always thought he was gay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, Ricky got into music and in the 80s had the gall to record two hit 80s pop songs called More to Lose and Bitter Heart with his duo, duo Siona Dancing. Now, if you've ever seen pictures of Siona Dancing, you would then realize why he became an events manager at the University of London. <laughs> it was there he met his longtime collaborator, Stephen Merchant. That's actually who I thought was his lover. Anyway. <laughs> he started writing sketches for BBC. Ricky continued with shows like The 11 O'Clock Show, Bruiser, Comedy Lab, Sketch Show. Is it Wikipedia great? Um, <laughs> the Mother Lode with The Office. The supremely funny character, David Brent and his perfectly constructed sitcom made him a worldwide water cooler talk staple, and a hero of most actor comedians, myself included. The office has been made, remade for the US, Quebec, France, Germany, and Brazil. So Ricky is now in the ether of what's technically known as the Big East. He's had the Guinness Book of Records credit him with the most downloaded podcast ever for the Ricky Gervais Show, He's been on Inside the Actors Studio, host of the Golden Globes. He's doing sold-out stand-up tours. He wrote a book called Flannables, which is now being made into a movie. He's appeared on The Simpsons as the Ricky Gervais HBO specials, and on and on and on. So clearly, to Ricky, comedy is not just a matter of life or death. It's much more serious than that. <laughs> it's about money. <laughs> He's won Ryder Field, the Peabody, the Golden Globes, Emmys, Rose Doors, Baptists. They don't count really because they're like the Gemini. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and on and on. And now here, at the very end of his career. <laughs> Seriously, though, no, I do want to take a, a second to say it is a real treat that they've allowed me to do this. I've never met Mr. Gervais, but he's a true hero. Uh, when they asked me to uh, present it, the conversation went something like, uh, Peter, would you like to present Ricky Gervais with you? No, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm a huge fan. And uh, Ricky Gervais is way up there for me in the rarefied era, and I put very, very few people up there in the likes of Monty Python. It is indeed my privilege to present the 2010 Sir Peter Usenoff Award to Mr. Ricky <coughs> Dean.
an award show. I'm actually heard a speech for the first time and a list of people who think um <laughs> a while ago, uh, joked, he said, Ricky, you travelled to the ends of the earth to get an award. I laughed, but here I am. <laughs> this is the third Bounce Award I've won. I, I've been younger the last two times, but um, I've won a couple before. I thought it was an acronym, like BAFTA. I didn't know it was an actual place called BAFTA. I certainly didn't think there was a place this far away from everything else. But, um, it's an absolute beautiful place. I'm so glad. I'm genuinely, it's, a, it's an amazing honour to have this um, award. Um, it's not a lifetime achievement award, is it? I don't know what it is. No. <laughs> I should warn Bam, uh, if you are thinking of ever giving me a lifetime achievement <laughs> award, sooner rather than later, it's fine. A posthumous one is no good to anyone. <laughs> Not really um, I don't know why I've got this with all the amazing people out there in the world. I think um, two reasons. One, <laughs> done, with all the brilliant TV I've created. <laughs> Two, because I promised I could attend the ceremony. <laughs> I should thank some people. Yeah, I've never done this before, but I, I should. Um, uh, uh, Stephen Merchant, uh, who from a chance meeting. Um, yeah. I, I consider working and writing with Stephen my day job. With everything else that happens, that, that's the thing I think is my, is my job. There's nothing better than sitting in a room with Stephen just coming up with stuff. Um, BBC for letting us do exactly what we wanted from the beginning, which is is unheard of. So genuine thanks to them. And HBO um, is my sort of spiritual home, this side of the pond. They're probably, I think, the best broadcaster in the world, possibly. Um, and I always used to be quite cynical when people at these occasions would thank their wives and, and girlfriends. But um, I have been with um, Jane. Uh, for, for ages, uh, from you know, from thick and thin, and um, she has done fuck all. I'm not going to say I'm not going to lie. That's why I don't say thank you because I've got no one to thank. And obviously, I've got no one. I have to think. <laughs> I mean, like, made up, I... <laughs> Joking aside, people from the beginning, through everything, by my side, doing fuck all. <laughs> it's just like a holiday to her. Um, and finally, I, um, I should thank God. <laughs> Thank Carl. Uh, you should have thanked Carl. I know, I should. I should. I was thinking of um, telling the story about the headline four saying about the chimps are so close. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, that is amazing. I told Carl, did I, did I, I, I told Carl that chimps are 98.6% genetically identical to humans. And I said, that's 1.4% difference. And Carl went, that's got to be the arse. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you said that this award actually means you have a YouTube clip where you're throwing yes. this award yeah. one that actually exactly. means something, and no. now you have two. It's great. It's absolutely great. And I love the design. And walking around, I can see it looks like this everywhere you look. <laughs> no, I love I love that. So you're going to keep this one too? Oh, definitely. Oh, this is... No, I genuinely, you know, I joke about it, but um, no, it's great.